हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू योर चैनल आरोही क्लासेस नाउ आई एम अपलोडिंग द लेक्चर नोट्स ऑन एंटीना एंड वेव प्रोपोगेशन व्हिच विल हेल्पफुल टू यू योर बीटेक कोर्स इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड कम्युनिकेशन एंड गेट आल्सो सो स्टार्ट फ्रॉम द बेसिक पैरामीटर्स ऑफ एंटीनाज एंटीनाज इज अ डिवाइस फॉर रेडिएटिंग और ट्रांसमिटिंग एंड रिसीविंग इलेक्ट्रोमैग्नेटिक वेव antenna is a transition between a guided em wave on a transmission line and a radiated em wave in a in a free space okay so antenna work as a transition device between a guided em wave on a transmission line and a radiated el electromagnetic wave in the free space if you draw the block diagram of an antenna it will look like this we have a block which represents antenna and the input power is applied from the source and the antenna red gives the output radiated power into the free space now the parameters of the radiated power these are the output parameters of the radiated power which comes into the category of radiation properties there are three parameters number 1 is total radiated power of the antenna radiation density and radiation intensity we will discuss these parameter in detail in upcoming lectures okay second is spatial distribution of radiation we use two type of coordinate system number one is rectangle coordinate system which gives the information about rectangular plots okay two dimensional plot or rectangle plots and second one is polar coordinate system which gives the information of radiation pattern of the given antenna these give the polar plot of the antenna system plot give the information about major lobe minor lobe which is also known as side lobe and back lobes half power beam width beam width between first null and side lobe levels the directivity of the antenna is defined by the directive gain and the polarization generally antenna has two type of polarization one is linear polarization and another is circular polarization linear polarization is of two type one is vertical polarization and number two is horizontal polarization and circular polarization is also of two types left hand circular polarization and right hand circular polarization we will discuss this copolarization and cross polarization in upcoming lectures in detail and we have two principal plane in the antenna system antenna radiation pattern one is e plane another one is h plane generally we use to calculate the beam width of e plane and h plane of the antenna system bandwidth the polarization bandwidth is another parameter of the antenna uh it gives the information for what frequency range our antenna is uh, linear polarized or circular polarized the input property is defined by the input impedance and matching with source means uh, return loss and vswr two more parameter which gives the relation between input and output number 1 is efficiency and number 2 is gain of the antenna some information about the antenna antennas are passive devices that do not require external power or biasing to operate antennas do not amplify rf energy if 100% efficient an antenna will not radiate more total power than is incident at its input terminal means if your antenna is 100% efficient it will not radiate more power than the applied power antenna functions as a directional amplifier over some specified frequency bandwidth as radiation pattern the radiation pattern is defined as a graphical representation of the radiation properties of the antenna as a function of space coordinates in most cases the radiation pattern is determined in the far field region and is represented as a function of of the directional coordinates the radiation property of most cons concern is the three dimensional spectral distribution of radiated energy as a function of the observer position along a constant radius a trace of the received power at a constant radius is called the power pattern pick 
isotropic and directional radiation radiation an isotropic radiator is defined as a hypothetical antenna having equal radiation in all direction an imaginary point source would be an example of this type of radiator although it is identical that it is ideal and not physically realizable it is often taken as a reference for expressing the directive properties of practical antennas a directional antenna is one having the property of radiating or receiving electromagnetic wave more effectively in some direction than in others see this is the radiation pattern of the isotropic radiator it has equal radiation in all direction if you, if you uh, draw the xy plane uh, by taking value of theta equal to 90 degree in xy plane it is give give you the circle means it has equal radiation in all direction this this is nothing but your azimuth plane and second one is elevation elevation plane or horizon okay if you take the value of phi 0 or 90 degree and take the value of where is the value of theta from 0 to pi it will give you half circle okay in both side direction so you can see here the radiation pattern of the antenna uh, isotropic radiator is a circle in both the azimuth and the elevation plane isotropic imaginary point source the isotropic is a imaginary point source it has equal radiation in all direction also referred to as a omnidirectional radiator but some author takes isotropic and omnidirectional antennas as a different because isotropic means antenna is also a lossless now see this is the radiation pattern of the directional antenna or you can say practical antenna directional antenna has a radiation pattern with a focused beam you can see here this antenna radiates its maximum energy in some direction and minimum energy in other direction you can see here this is a main lobe this is a main lobe uh, practical antennas or uh, for physical antennas generally radiates all power in the main lobe in a particular direction which is nothing but the main lobe and uh, where minimum power in some other direction these are nothing but side lobes level side lobes and this is nothing but the back lobe the lobe which is just in the opposite direction of the main lobe that is back lobe and all others except main lobe are side lobes so this is the radiation pattern of the directional radi radiator or you can say physical antenna or practical antenna radiation pattern of the omnidirectional antenna or you can say dipole antenna dipole antenna is a practical antenna which is considered as a omnidirectional antenna because it has omnidirectional radiation pattern in the azimuth plane okay so that's why it is considered as a omnidirectional antenna but it has a figure of 8 radiation pattern or donut shaped radiation pattern in the elevation plane you can see here in azimuth plane you take the value of theta 90 degree and vary the value of phi from 0 to 2 pi then you will get the circle which is nothing but the h plane of the dipole antenna okay if you take the value of phi 0 degree or 90 degree and where is the value of theta from 0 to pi or 2 pi then you will get the elevation plane and you can see in that plane the antenna has a radiation pattern which has a shape of figure of 8 so it has a omnidirectional radiation pattern in h plane or or you can say in azimuth plane so that's why we consider dipole antenna or monopole antenna as a omnidirectional antenna now the information provided by the radiation pattern or the information about the lobes a radiation lobe is a portion of the radiation pattern bounded by region of relatively weak radiation intensity a radiation lobe is a portion of the radiation pattern bounded by the regions of relatively weak radiation intensity a major lobe is also known as main beam is defined as the radiation lobe 
containing the direction of maximum radiation a minor lobe is any lobe except a major lobe a side lobe is uh, is a radiation lobe in any direction other than the intended lobe a back lobe usually refers to a minor lobe that occupies the hemisphere in a direction opposite to that of the major or main lobe here this is the 3d plot 3d radiation pattern of the antenna so you can see here the antenna radiating maximum power into the main lobe and rest others are the minor lobes and the lobe which is just in the opposite direction of the main lobe is the back lobe so see here the radiation pattern gives the information about the half power beam width fastenal beam width and side lobe levels of the radiation pattern so you can see here in figure number 2 how to calculate the half power beam width and first null beam width so you can see here here we have the first null in, into the left hand side here we have first null into the left hand side here we have second null into the right hand side the angle between these two points is nothing but the first null beam width the angle between um, the angle from this point to this point is nothing but from this point to this point is nothing but the first null beam width half power beam width is see here antenna is radiating maximum power in this direction okay so when we goes down it will give a minus 3 db point and we stretch a line and at this point so the angle from this point to this point this will give you the half power beam width of the antenna and side lobe level is nothing but the difference between the maximum point maximum point of the main beam and maximum point of the side lobe adjacent side lobe the difference between these two point is nothing but the side lobe level okay and for a good antenna system as side lobe level should as high as possible for radar application this parameter is very important okay this side lobe level should much much high or more than great uh, 30 db for a good antenna if we are using that antenna for a radar application so side lobe level should be greater than 25 or 30 db in that case for a linear polarized antenna the e plane is defined as the plane containing the electric field vector and the direction of maximum radiation and the H plane is defined as the plane containing the magnetic field vector and the direction of maximum radiation. These are the two principal plane into the radiation pattern of the antennas. These are the field reasons of the antenna. Antenna generally have three field reason. Number one is reactive near field reason. Number two is radiating near field reason and number third is far field reason and the boundary of these re reasons are defined by these two formulas r1 is equal to 0 0.62 under root d cube divided by lambda and r2 equal to 2d square divided by lambda where d is the maximum antenna dimension and lambda is the operating wavelength of the frequency next is antenna impedance Antenna impedance is generally is a complex quantity and is defined as at its input terminal Z equal to RA plus minus JXA where RA is the real and XA is the imaginary. At resonance frequency antenna impedance will be of the form of Z equal to RA. Okay, because antenna works on the principle of maximum power transfer theorem so at the resonance z a equal to r a consider r a to have the form r a equal to r r plus r l where r l is the loss resistance and r r is the radiation resistance now from the circuit point of view the power radiated by the antenna the power radiated by the antenna is considered as a loss to the system 
RL is the loss resistance RR is the radiation resistance okay so antenna efficiency is defined in general we want that and uh, 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 the power we have applied to the antenna the power should radiate all power into the free space okay there should be no loss in the antenna so antenna efficiency is defined as RR divided by RA where RA equal to RR plus RL suppose if your antenna is loss less then RL will be zero and your antenna efficiency will be hundred percent but practically RL has some value so that's why your antenna efficiency is always less than hundred percent to transfer maximum energy from a transmission line feed cable to to the antenna the antenna's impedance must identically match that of the transmission line okay our antenna work on a maximum power transfer th theorem so that's why antenna impedance should be equal to the cable impedance which is connected to the antenna any mismatch between antenna fee antenna and feed cable impedance will reduce the system efficiency okay S see uh, if the antenna impedance match to the cable impedance maximum power transfer to the antenna but if there is mismatch then the transmitted power will be reduced so it will reduce the system efficiency the VSWR defines the how closely the antenna impedance matches the feed cable characteristic impedance VSWR is defined as 1 plus mod of rho divided by 1 minus mod of rho where rho is nothing but the reflection coefficient at the antenna terminal so rho is equal to z a bar minus 1 divided by z a bar plus 1 if antenna impedance match to the cable impedance then z a will be equal to z 0 and your reflection coefficient will be 0 ok z a minus z a divided by z a plus z a equal to 0 in that case your VSWR value will be 1 so always remember if the value of VSWR is 1 that means there is no any mismatch there is no any mismatch between the cable impedance and the antenna input impedance if there is a mismatch VSWR value will be greater than the one okay VSWR value will be greater than the one or generally VSWR bandwidth considered at 1.5 okay so always remember if the value of VSWR is one there is no mismatch and it is the means maximum power is transmitting to the load so that is enough for today if you like my video on this antenna lecture series please like my video subscribe my channel and share this video thank you